Wednesday of the eighth week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, realize that you were ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified yourselves by obedience to the truth for sincere brotherly love, love one another intensely from a pure heart, You have been born anew, not from perishable, but from imperishable seed, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of the field. The grass withers, and the flower wilts, but the word of the Lord remains forever. This is the word that has been proclaimed to you. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates, he has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord. Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The disciples were on their way, going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. Taking the twelve aside again, he began to tell them what was going to happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him, spit upon him, scourge him, and put him to death. But after three days he will rise. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The chalice that I drink you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt but it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1. Verses 18 to 25. 
Jesus has paid the price for us. The price was not silver or gold, it was his precious blood. Because we've been redeemed by this incredible gift, we should live in that gift. We should live a life that is not marked by worldly things, but rather a life filled with eternity. Flesh is like grass, it passes away, it has no permanence. We have to live for the things of the Spirit. Now there's Jesus who paid the price for our sins. He was the one who was chosen before the foundation of the world. Notice the idea of pre-existence. Before anything existed, Jesus was already chosen by the Father. Now we could ask a question here. Before the foundation of the world, if Jesus was chosen, does that mean that Jesus was going to come into this world even if we hadn't sinned? That is the theory of Blessed John Duns Scotus, who preached that God so loved us that even if we hadn't sinned, Jesus would have come into the world to take part in our human condition. That's not the theory of Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas taught that our first sin was a felix culpa, a happy fault, something that we see in the exalted, because through our sin, Jesus came into the world. So notice, even about these important things of our faith, there are different theories because we're dealing with mystery, which goes beyond our human understanding. And sometimes saying both things can somehow be true. The Gospel is from Mark 10, 32 to 45. Jesus predicts his passion a third time. Remember in the previous two predictions, the disciples responded in an inappropriate way. The first time, Peter told Jesus not to say anything about his passion because Peter was afraid that the people would misunderstand. He thought that Jesus was going to be the Messiah, but a Messiah who was a conquering hero and not one who would suffer and die for our sins. So Jesus has to tell Peter, get behind me, Satan. The second time Jesus predicts his passion, the disciples are talking about who's most important among them. This third time, James and John come up to Jesus and say, when you get to your kingdom, can we sit on your right and left? That's like telling your best friend that you're dying of cancer. And the response is, what a shame. But can I have your car when you're gone? I always liked it. They're only thinking of themselves. And what Jesus has to teach them is that following him, sharing in his glory, means also sharing in his cross. So he says, are you ready to drink the chalice of which I'm to drink? The chalice is that idea of sharing in Jesus' fate. We have to remember that when we go up to receive the Eucharist, that by receiving the Eucharist, we're not only receiving something from Jesus, we're also promising to share in his cross and resurrection. Jesus then instructs them that the great ones of the pagans lord it over others. It shouldn't be that way among the disciples of Jesus because the Son of Man has come to serve, not to be served. Our discipleship is based not upon how much power we can accrue, how much fame, what people think of us, but rather how much we can serve, how much we can love, how much we can sacrifice of ourself in order to be of service to God and to each other. And may God bless us.